Hey everyone, today I'm in Oklahoma City at Memorial Park Cemetery. And I've been in here before, we actually covered Wiley Post, who's just walking distance over that way. But today we're here to see the guy that's responsible for a huge retail chain that came out of Oklahoma. It's now defunct, but it holds a special place in my heart. And at the end of this, I'll kind of tell how he holds a special place in my heart. But we're talking about C.R. Anthony, Charles Ross Anthony, and the name of his store was Anthony's. If you grew up in Oklahoma, you definitely knew who he was, but he had stores nationwide, so there could be some of you guys that shopped at his stores uh, in other states. So let's take a look at his grave. This is his marker right here. We've had a lot of rain lately, so it's actually little dirty and then this is his wife right here and uh we'll just brush this off a little so we can see a little bit better try to be respectful and clean it off for them this memorial park cemetery is a very large cemetery and like i said we've had a lot of rain so it just kind of washes down on top of them but now, Charles Ross Anthony was an interesting guy. You can see there on his marker, he was born in 1884. And he was the son of some Tennessee farmers. And about the age of 10, he was orphaned. And from there, he had to work various jobs, just basically farm work. Worked in the cotton fields and barns, taking care of horses, was a horse jockey, worked in factories. Um, I know he did a, a barrel factory work and uh, over the course of three years he saved $25 so at age 13 he bought a ticket to get as far away from Tennessee as he possibly could and that ticket landed him here in Indian Territory and here he worked uh, various dry goods and retail stores and that led him to meet his wife, who's buried beside him. But eventually, he landed a partnership with the J.P. Martin Company, and there he became uh, vice president. Now, that particular company, uh, he owned shares in, and so he liquidated his shares to open his very first store in Cushing, Oklahoma. The name of that store was called the Dixie Store, and that was in 1922. And uh, the reason why he used Dixie Store is that J.P. Martin had prevented Charles from using his own name in the store. And so uh, his first stores uh, were Dixie Stores. And by 1923, he had four Dixie Stores and two C.R. Anthony stores in Oklahoma. And these stores were kind of in smaller areas. And uh, that's, that's where he prospered. People knew who he was and he, he really uh, marketed towards the rural, more rural areas. And so people always thought of him as the friendliest store in town. And his business actually grew during the Great Depression. That's how remarkable his... Uh, business model was but in 1924 and 25 he opened his first stores out of the state of Oklahoma which were in Kansas and Texas and uh, he basically used the profits from one store to finance another store and he held kind of a similar business model as JP did and he, he basically he made each store manager uh, to where they held one-third partnership in it, his own store. And he thought that those who owned a portion of the business would care most about the business welfare. And like I said, the company saw growth during the Great Depression and uh, eventually it just kept growing and growing. And in 1950, Anthony's opened its first store on the West Coast, which was in Van Nuys, California. Now, at the peak of the uh, retail chain, 
There were approximately 325 stores in 21 states, which were all west of the Mississippi. So if you're on the East Coast, maybe you've never seen an Anthony's. And you got to be a kind of a certain age to see these. But uh, anyways, Charles retired from the company in 1972, but it remained uh, with the family all that time. And uh, so he, the son, uh, Guy Anthony served as president until 1980 and his oldest son Ray Anthony served as chair of the board and treasurer for 12 years and eventually in, in 1986 Bob Anthony who is Guy's son uh, took over as the third president so um, but at that time in the late 80s Anthony's kind of got into financial trouble a little bit uh, and it really it was kind of hard times for everyone during that time period here in Oklahoma. Uh, the oil industry had kind of gone bust. But anyways, the, the company was facing, facing a buyout in 1987. And uh, then it did a bankruptcy reorganization. And um, that was in 1991. And the other efforts failed to save the company. So what eventually happened in 1997 is the Houston based stage stores purchased Anthony stores and it ended the 75 year reign that the Anthony family had here in Oklahoma as well as in other states with the Anthony stores now this is his wife right here um, there are some other Anthony family members here in uh, this cemetery as well as some other cemeteries this is a quite large cemetery in fact his grandson Bob that uh, took over as the third president of the company he's actually the corporation commissioner for Oklahoma has held it for some time so he's heavily involved in politics um, and, and this Anthony family was highly active in their community they they believed in giving back so they were uh, board members of, of multiple things from their church to the YMCA to all kinds of things. I think she was involved in the Daughters of the American Revolution, um, all sorts of things. Um, as I was trying to find their grave, I noticed there were a couple more, and I'm assuming maybe that they're relatives. This uh, Claudia Anthony Hoskins, maybe they're a relative somehow. And then right here, Steve Anthony Claspy Jr. I'm assuming that they could be a relative since they've got that middle name Anthony. And they're right here next to each other. And they're right over there in the same row as them. So the reason why Anthony's holds a special place for me is that uh, whenever I was a kid, I had really deformed feet. They were club feet, they were bent inwards, and they kind of had a curve. Like if you were to look at it at the bottom of the foot, it just curved like this, but then they bent inwards also. So I had really crooked feet. My mom would actually bend my feet, kind of some uh, physical therapy to get them out. But I had special shoes, kind of like Forrest Gump, and I had to wear these shoes all the time. I actually called them my wooden shoes is what I referred to them to. They were really stiff and uh, they, were, they were basically corrective shoes that you had to go get a prescription for. You would get it from the doctor and then you would have it filled at a shoe store. And I'm thinking the name of that shoe store was Buster Browns, but I'm not sure. Don't, don't quote me on that part. But anyways, as other kids were wearing uh, like hiking boot type deals, cowboy boots, uh, and, and really specifically tennis shoes. You know, wearing the Nike tennis shoes, the Adidas tennis shoes, I really wanted a pair of tennis shoes. But because of the deformity that my feet had, I could not get a pair of tennis shoes. So uh, one day whenever I was seven years old, my feet had for fully uh, corrected themselves. And at this point, I could get my first pair of tennis shoes, and I knew exactly what I wanted. Let me show you kind of on the bottom of my shoe, or on the top anyways. I wore some tennis shoes, and specifically blue, in honor of Charles Anthony. Now the tennis shoes that I wanted 
was a particular brand of tennis shoes that they carried in Anthony's. And the design of them was much like the design of any of them at the time. They would kind of go up like this, and then they would kind of go down like this, and it just had material right here, and then it would loop back around. I have to see if I can include a picture of maybe Nikes or Adidas or something of that time period. But that's basically what they were, was just blue canvas shoes, little bit of silver, and a little bit of white. So the name of the shoes were called Fastbacks. Now I didn't think that I was overly fast just because I had Fastbacks, but these things were unbelievably comfortable compared to what I had been wearing. And I never will forget the smell of the shoes that I got. I took them home. I was so excited. I remember putting them in my bed. I remember sleeping with them. I can remember sniffing the shoes over and over until they lost that new smell. And so still to this day, when I go in a shoe store and I smell that smell, it takes me back to 1981 when I got my first pair of shoes, the Fastbacks. These were almost like a unique brand that were all of Anthony's. That's one of the things that they prided themselves on is that they did have clothing and stuff like that that had their brand name on it. And uh, but, but you could go in there and get Levi's or anything else. But Fastbacks hold a special memory. I had a new pair of those for years. I just kept getting them and kept getting them. They were some of my favorite shoes. But we're gonna go around, take a look at some of the other relatives of Mr. Anthony. I thought I would actually include a picture of the Anthony's that I used to shop in and it's the very Anthony's where I got my first pair of tennis shoes. I've been in multiple Anthony's and bought clothing throughout several Anthony's but this is the specific one where I bought my shoes. This is a much older picture of course but it kind of gives you an idea of what the storefronts usually looked like. There's some older styles that you can kind of see even just remnants in some of the towns where it may say C.R. Anthony's. But anyways, let me show you the next person here, which is one of Charles' sons. So I am now in section 40A. You can't miss this particular marker. It's about chest high. And it says Anthony on both sides. And if you go straight down that road, you'll eventually run into Wiley Post as well as Charles Anthony. So it's all right here, almost in a line. But this marker is designating the burial location of Guy Anthony. He's one of the sons of Charles Anthony, and he took over as president from 1972 to 1980 when he himself retired. Now, he is the father of Bob Anthony. Uh, Guy had six children, and Bob Anthony is the one that's in the Corporation Commission here in Oklahoma. He's been highly active in the political community, and he has held that position since the 80s. Uh, just about since the time when uh, Anthony's was kind of in, in a little bit of trouble. But... Uh, I think he's well liked and well received. In fact, he's up for election next month. Not really seeing any reason why he won't get that. Um, but this is his mother, Bob's mother, or Guy's wife, Christine Holland Anthony. Now you'll notice that last name Brown. Um, I'm sure that these two met while working at Anthony's because that seems to be how that is for a lot of these family members, but. You'll notice he passed away in 1991 and she remarried in 1992 to a gentleman with the last name of Brown. So that's why that's there. And that was shortly before her passing in 1993. But they were both dedicated people to uh, not only Anthony's but also the community in Oklahoma City um, as, as far as being on several boards and things like that uh, just making Oklahoma City a better place not only was uh, Guy um, working for Anthony's for over 50 years but he also served three years in the South Pacific and uh, he rose to the rank of captain 
and he's also a Bronze Star recipient. So he's also an American hero. Right here in the same cemetery as his father. So we are now at the burial location of Helen Anthony and uh, she married uh, a Galloway. So right up above you'll see that the nickname is Bud and it says M.B. Galloway but his name is actually Marion Barrett Galloway and he worked for Charles for a lot of years. In fact, uh, he worked for the Anthony's company for over 45 years. And that's how he met his wife, Helen. He, he started low and worked his way up high. That's kind of how it was. A lot of these people, they worked in this business and they met their spouses in this business. And uh, evidently, Anthony's was a great place to work. Because there sure were a lot of people that stayed there for a long time. I just thought I'd show you where she is located. There is another daughter that's in this cemetery. Um, I don't think I'll be able to find her. They, they have a funeral that's going on today right near where I'm standing. In fact, it's right over there. So their, uh, their chapel and indoor mausoleum was uh, pretty busy along with their office. So I didn't want to disturb them and ask where it was at. But this is the outdoor mausoleum or what they call or refer to as the patio mausoleum. And so this is where she is located. Just down the way from where she is at is her brother. We're talking about Ray Anthony. It was located right here. Now this is the eldest son of Charles. And so when Charles retired in 1972, Ray Anthony served as the chair of the board and the treasurer for about 12 years. And uh, he is quite the American hero as well. Um, he was a World War II veteran and uh, threw, flew 35 combat missions over Japan as a B-29 gunner and he earned the Distinguished Flying Cross. But as you can see, this is another case where I believe that he met his wife uh, through the company of Anthony's. And uh, like I said, it was Charles and then his two sons and then of course the grandson that, that pretty well ran that thing. But then also down there you can see uh, the vice president down there. But like I said, this, this uh, company holds a special place in my heart. We are now at the site of an old Anthony's store. You can see painted right up on the side of the brick is Anthony's. And then below is CR Anthony Company. This is on Northwest 24th and May in Oklahoma City. Now this old Anthony's is one that I never went in when it was open. At least not as the actual store of Anthony's. But I used to frequent this location a lot afterwards. It was an antique store for a long time. And I think it's been multiple things since. Currently it is a floral shop. But I was on the way back from visiting all of the Anthony burial locations. And I wanted to showcase this and it just started pouring. We've had a lot of rain lately. But it actually stopped long enough for me to capture this and uh, you can see the water pouring out of that gutter off of the roof. But anyways, I don't know if there are any other locations within Oklahoma City that say Anthony's anymore. Um, if you do know of a location, leave a comment below. I would love to know where that's at. I know the old Anthony's that I used to go to, um, there, there, I don't think there's anything left at all unless it's way back in the back or something inside of the store but this is the only thing that I know of I occasionally see something painted on the side of buildings in smaller towns but this is the only thing in Oklahoma City so this is the side of the front view of the old Anthony's building 
and it looks pretty similar the signage has changed I do remember once the antique store went out of business they sort of revamped uh, the front part of this but it looks relatively the same I know there's a sign right there that's in the way but otherwise it's pretty dang similar I'll put in an old picture so you can compare it to this new video you can kind of see the difference there just wanted to thank you guys for joining me on this little tour of Anthony's some of the history of the company and those that ran it like I said this company holds a special place in my heart as it was the very first place that I got my very first pair of tennis shoes so that smell still remains with me today if you ever were lucky enough to go into Anthony's maybe you have a similar experience or just enjoyed shopping there something that I grew up with and many Oklahomans grew up with but knowing that they were in 21 states you might have had one where you were at as well so if you have any shopping experiences with Anthony's or any memories of Anthony's leave a comment below thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time